Hello everybody and welcome back to Slow Your Roll. I'm Alex and today I'm thrilled to dive into the depths of darkness with a non-spoiler review of The Widow's Web Trials of the Drought created by Eight-Legged Entertainment. This is a module created for D&D 5e compatible with the new 2024 handbooks. Promises an exciting experience intertwining cooperation and betrayal. At its core, the Widow's Web transforms the typical cooperative nature of D&D into a high-stakes competition. Set in the underdark city of Kazakh Mar, players assume the role of Umbral Drow Champions, participating in this deadly tournament orchestrated by your deity, Malarachne, also known as the Mother Spider. And what is the prize? Well, that's control of the entire city, Kazakh Mar, for a century. And truly, one of the standout features of this module would happen to be its cooperation, cooperation and competition smashed together. Because while players have to cooperate to overcome serious external threats, they're also in a competition, knowing only one of them can emerge victorious. This will create a tension filled battlefield where every single decision can tip the balance between rivalry and alliance. Character creation is typical from standard 5e, but with a twist. Everybody plays as Umbral Drow with an evil alignment to kind of represent the city and the houses competing for this honor. But the reason why you play as an Umbral Drow is for Malarachne's blessing. And if you really wanted to play as a different race, I'm sure you could probably talk your DM into tacking that onto somebody else's racial description. Everyone is going to start at level 8, so it's not the typical level 1, 3, or maybe even 5 start that you see every time. You're going to start as a pretty competent dude. You're going to know what you got going on. Multiclassing is totally allowed, but make sure your characters avoid things that rely on summoning companions like rangers or warlocks. Because familiars and companions are not allowed. We need to focus on individual strength of the character in this competition. The player will also begin with minimal gear. You've got the clothes on your back and a weapon at hand. And there's also a couple of house rules that you probably need to consider and at the very least make sure everyone knows about before we start playing the Widow's Whip. Death is instant. There are no death saving throws in this competition. Once your hit points hit zero, that's the end. This also means that there's no revival spells. Once you're dead, you're dead. A fortunate thing is attuning to magic items is instantaneous and there's no limit to how many things you can be attuned to. And this helps to make players quickly adapt to the ever-changing resources at hand. I've said it before, but I'll say it again, no summonings or companions. One of my personal favorite house rules is going to be enemy and ally designations. Players can freely designate others as allies or enemies for abilities and spells, adding an extra layer of strategy, and this is so cool. I can just imagine the cleric that only buffed himself even though that's supposed to buff the whole room. Now I know what you might be thinking already, all evil characters, PvP, this is a recipe for disaster. But no, this module was conceived all the way back in 1985. Seeking to address the specific challenges faced by evil characters and PvP at the D&D table. Over decades, the creator has refined this idea into a one-shot, where players can embrace the evil roles in a structured environment that mitigates player negative interactions. And adventures like these have been playtested extensively, with over 20 iterations truly demonstrating its replayability. But while we're on the topic of replayability, this specific book is going to include three webs, three adventures for you guys to tackle with unique challenges and encounters for your table. While it is traditionally designed for up to eight players, there's rules on if you have a smaller group and how to handle it. And since these are all in the one shot format, it's pretty much ideal for the table that's not really looking to have a year long stretching campaign. And most of the time when you're looking for a book, that's what they're trying to sell you. And if this is something you want to take to your table, the Kickstarter comes out today. So make sure to grab it yourself. I'd like to do my best to avoid spoilers for any of the story beats in the Widow's Web module which is perfect because they sent a sample adventure that essentially encapsulates what you're trying to do throughout the Widow's Web. And I don't have to worry about spoiling that, so let's get into it. 
setting the scene. You hear the announcer echo over the crowd. Idle hands! Eight players enter into the tournament room. The crowd roars. Into the center of the room, there's a pedestal with seven idols on top of it. Each of them a different idol. Some of them carrying magical blessings, other magical curses. Whosoever does not return to the starting position with an idol shall be eliminated. There are several tiles on the ground trapped for various effects, noting things like the half-spider, half-drow vassalach that's going to try to restrain anyone that gets close. There will be ice wraiths over by... Well, I don't want to tell you where they're at, but they're definitely going to inflict some slowing effects. And you're also going to see something cool, the Neuro Demon. Also, I happen to love that name, which uses things like telekinesis to push players around and even into hazards. And what would a tournament be without things like trapped chests? Sure, the chest could have something beneficial in it, but who knows, maybe it's a mimic or it's gonna explode. There are things like global effects that are persistent all throughout the trials, as in players having resistance to other players. So that way it encourages to go through the challenges and not just a, you know, all out brawl fest. That's not what we're here for. But as you can see, the goal is to eliminate one of your co-ops, if you will. But as you can see, it's a brutal competition with many challenges in front of you and someone is not going to leave the room. And for anyone interested in buying this module, I got a couple of tips for anyone trying to run this too. Make sure you read through the module, of course. You don't want to forget anything that might be important. And understand the house rules and make sure everyone else does too. They are kind of there for a reason to facilitate a fair gameplay competition. There's plenty of visual aids provided within the PDF, but I know you guys are creative and probably can come up with so many good arena maps of your own. So be prepared with an awesome map and uh, maybe get your imagination muscles flexing. Most importantly though, I would say that you need a note card to summarize the key points of every single room. So that way you don't have to forget the effects that you're now moving into because the challenges change pretty often for the DM. So that's something you have to stay on top of. Player communication is always going to be important and expectations need to be set. I think I may have mentioned this before, but just make sure you have that talk. And since there's a couple of extra rules along with character creation, you might get ahead by just creating a couple of level 8 characters that are already Umbral Drow just to say, Hey everybody, wanna play? And of course if they want to make their own characters, please let them do so, but you're always there to help. So let's get into the pros and cons, and I tried to generate a couple for each side. It's an innovative and high stakes type of gameplay, which is sometimes really different from typical D&D, and I do love that. It totally encourages strategy, which is awesome. I love it when the players use their heads at the table to make something happen that you never thought of before. And there's a massive amount of replayability, not just with the three different stories, but with the specific story at hand. There's so many different things that could happen in each one of the challenge rooms, so it's almost like endless endings. Almost. And for some of the cons, I would have to say that there's, of course, potential for player conflict when it comes to evil characters and PvP. That's kind of the nature of it, and mitigating it was their goal, but you as the DM might have to just jump in and be referee every now and then. Now I know D&D can be complicated enough, but we are adding just a few more rules onto the bunch, so if that doesn't sound like your cup of tea, that's one of the cons in my list, because I definitely need a sticky note to keep some of the extra rules down. And I guess the last con that I could come up with is there's limited amounts of roleplay, but I would really only say that that's for social interactions. There's so many different kinds of roleplay opportunities that you can have in combat as well. And I think you'll find that you'll be able to stretch those creative muscles while you're playing this. And what are my final thoughts on The Widow's Web Trial of the Drow created by 8-Legged Entertainment? I actually think it's pretty fun. Reading through this thing, I would give it like 8, 9 out of 10. It's really good artwork. It seeks to do something different, and I really do think it accomplishes that goal. As long as you have people around the table that are trying to accomplish a fun game, then you're going to have fun as well. 
Hopefully I provided enough examples of the artwork while I was talking, but the artwork was amazing in the package of the Widow's Web that was sent my way. With most of the examples that I've shown for you today, there's so many more in the PDF, which is going to be over 250 pages. And for me, this happened to come up at the perfect time. We've been doing the spooky cryptids and we've been doing the gauntlet videos, and this is almost perfect for smashing them both together. They also have the Kickstarter coming out today, so link in the description to check that out. And until next time, everybody, we'll see you all later.